Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. You know, I remember during my days as a dog trainer, there was this one fellow and... Alright, forget all that. I have something important to tell you. Right, so you know Surfshark, the VPN that you can use on unlimited devices because it's the 21st century and why should you be paying extra to protect more than one device? You might be familiar with the fact that when you follow the link in the description below and enter the code JAGO, you can get 83% off a two-year plan plus three months extra free. But also, check it out, for the month of June, if you use that code, you also get Surfshark's antivirus for free. So not only will you have their excellent VPN to hide you from online snooping and to get around region locks on content, but you'll be able to protect yourself from even more nefarious threats in the world of the online. Click on the link in the description to take advantage of this splendid offer, which even comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Alright, back to that jerk who talks about trains. I try not to make my videos too technical, partly because I know a lot of people who watch these aren't hardcore train nerds like me, but also because I'm certainly not any kind of expert. Where I do use technical terms, I try to explain them as best I can, but something I don't think I've ever properly explained is the sets of numbers I use when describing locomotives. For instance, this engine is an 040. This engine is a 460. This is known as white notation, and is a method of describing the way the wheels are arranged on a steam locomotive. If you're familiar with the design of locomotives in general, the wheel arrangement can be quite a useful piece of information, and I'll explain why shortly. White notation is an American system devised by Frederick White of the New York Central Railroad. It was used in North America and Britain, among other places. It tends not to be applied to modern locomotives, because modern engines usually have their wheels mounted on bogies. Some diesel shunters, such as the Class 08, are similar to steam locomotives in terms of their design layout. So they do use white notation. Basically, as with just about everything in railway history, there are no absolute rules. Maybe I should just explain how it works. The white system consists of, typically, three numbers. The first number represents the number of unpowered wheels that support the locomotive at the front. The middle number represents the driving wheels, that is, the connected wheels through which power is transmitted from the cylinders. And the final number represents the number of unpowered wheels at the back. Larger engines often have a tender to carry coal and water. This isn't counted as part of the locomotive, so the wheels aren't listed. So, for example, here we have a 462. Four wheels at the front, six in the middle, two at the back. Here, meanwhile, we have an 060. No wheels at the front, six driving wheels in the middle, none at the back. Sometimes you have more than one set of driving wheels, so, for instance, here is a double fairly. That's classed as an 0440. There might be a letter, or two letters, after the numbers to tell you a little more about the engine. For instance, this engine is an 060T. T stands for tank engine, i.e. one that does not have a tender. And yes, I realise that tender also begins with a T, and it's things like that that make studying railway history such a fun and in no way annoying pursuit. As I said earlier, you can tell a lot about an engine from its wheel arrangement, especially as locomotive designs evolved and became more specialised. An engine designed for heavy freight typically has more driving wheels and fewer supporting wheels. The 9F, perhaps the ultimate in heavy freight locomotives on British railways, was a 210O. At the other end of the scale, locomotives designed for fast passenger trains in the 19th and early 20th centuries often only had two driving wheels. They were 222s or 422s. So from the wheels, you can get an idea of what an engine was built for and perhaps when it was built. All these numbers are a little confusing and impersonal, so wheel arrangements often acquired nicknames. These, again, seem to be American in origin. A 462 was a Pacific. A 442 was an Atlantic. A 262 was a Prairie. There were also Moguls, Mikados, Baltics, Jubilees, Adriatics, and a whole raft of other names. Some of them didn't catch on in Britain. In America, a 440 was known as an American, after the 440 locomotives that were absolutely synonymous with American railways in the 19th century. 
but they didn't have that association over here. Some nicknames didn't catch on in Britain because we just didn't have engines that big. Some examples are the 484 Northerns, the 4102 Overlands and the 2120 Centipedes. A big engine in Britain is a medium-sized engine in America. Some railways had their own codes for wheel arrangements. The London and North Eastern Railway used letters. A indicated a 462, B a 460, C a 442, and so on. More experimental locomotives ended up with strange wheel arrangements. This engine, a one-off built by the London and North Eastern Railway, is a 280082. And this one, which, believe it or not, is a steam engine known as the leader, is an 060060. And its wheels are mounted on bogies, which ruins that point I made earlier about why we don't use white notation for modern locomotives. As diesels and electric locomotives superseded steam engines, a totally different system known as the UIC system came into use. This is a fearsomely complicated code which I'm not going to go into here. Maybe some other time. Or maybe not. Who knows. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If so, please do leave a like and subscribe for more. Also, let me know if you'd like to see me cover more of these technical subjects. Like I say, I am no engineer, but I'm happy to learn. Thanks as ever to my donors on Kofi and Patreon. You are the connecting rods to my driving wheels. Thanks to Surfshark for once again sponsoring my video. Click on the link in the description below to take advantage of their generous offer. And I'll see you all again very soon. Cheerio.